So guys, hi, uh, I'm Yahani Bisanik from Sri Lanka. And today I'll be talking about growth hacking tips and tricks uh, for all startups and entrepreneurs. Um, if you have any questions regarding this, uh, please feel free to email me or uh, chat, chat in here. We can drop a message in LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter, anything you like. And uh, I'll be more than happy to help you. So uh, the topic we're talking today is growth hacking tips and tricks and these are the contents uh, for the whole speech. And uh, when coming into the term growth hacking, the majority of the users of this is startups. Simply saying this is the bread and butter for startups. And each year, thousands of startups emerge from every industry all over the world, but only a few remain stable and make a difference. Others collapse and or maybe be thinking to quit due to frustration of unsuccessful results, or maybe because of the latest pandemic these days. If you're into startup or thinking of joining a one, you definitely do not need to fall into the latter category I mentioned earlier. So what should you do? This is simple, but highly logical, and you can always improve the results with your common sense. Or you can become this growth hacker that every startup wants. Growth hacking is that much popular nowadays and will be a highly demanded skill in your future. Since everybody wants to grow, you can be a natural with their steps. So the beginning of the concept growth hacking was started by Sean Ellis in 2010, and I'm not going to talk about it much. So a traditional marketer has a broad view and understanding of marketing, but still this was not the skill for startups. These skills are really demanding in bigger companies, but what startups need is something different. They need to grow, and this is where growth hacking comes into life. A true growth hacker does not need bigger budgets or expenses. What you really need is the growth. He can make a dead mouse into a bigger company chain with his beaming skills. And this is the example I take always, a dead mouse into a bigger company chain. And for example, you can take Facebook, Airbnb, and Instagram, and you know the history of these companies. You know what they have done. And you know what I'm talking about. So what growth hacking actually do? Generally, a startup uses analytical, inexpensive, creative, and innovative methods to expand their company's customer base, and this is growth hacking. Use it wisely, and your startup will rise up to this sky. So let's talk about each of these strategies in short. But first of all, say you have this awesome idea in your mind, but you may have targeted the whole white world. No, my dear friend, this is where most of the startups get their wrong terms. So rule number one, do not target the whole world. The narrower and precise your target audience is, the bigger you get your first passing rate. Think of Instagram. This is photo uploading and target audience is narrowed down to that point. Other strategies and features comes next, but this narrow audience at first is important. So it helps you to identify your target and their actual need. So the first rule to remember is to target a minimum crowd and then you can think of who would get the maximum benefit from your product. Be specific and describe a real person as best as possible. So if I take an example, if you want to sell your beauty tips based software, then who should you address? The whole bunch of women? No. If I were you, i tell it like this. A 20 year old female who is beauty conscious, lives in Colombo, because that's my city, whatever the city is, is skinny, that she is fit conscious and just after her higher studies, teenager and spends most of her time online. That means uh, handling a software is not a problem for her. So you should be this much detailed or maybe more than this to find your ideal customer. Then only you can address the real needs of your customers. And then these ideal target customers will do one of the most important things in marketing, word of mouth. In the digital world, word of mouth can be in the form of sharing the good name of your product. So without actually spending thousand US dollars or maybe more for advertising, you have got free positive side advertising. And this is the spirit of growth hacking. So rule number two, create a product or a service that people tend to buy as an actual need. In short, create something that customers actually want or create the need for real. Sometimes you have to invest a huge amount of money and in return, you may get nothing. The reason behind this is users do not need these products. For example, I may take New Coke and Crystal Pepsi. Some of you may have heard of these products and both products were launched with a higher advertising budget and ended up failing. They couldn't even recover the expenses. The reasons, reason behind these failures were the very same we spoke earlier. Users did not actually want those and the old products were restored with the old clan. 
Of course, you should not want this ill fate for you to happen. To avoid this, always try to understand your customer. Try to understand what they actually want. Word of mouth matters in this case also. Say your product is bad, the news travels fast and almost everybody knows that. So you do not have this third eye to know the exact feeling of the customers, but you can always take feedback so the third eye can be awakened. Always take feedback. Say you have this awesome idea of your product, but before starting to build it, start asking and answering questions regarding it. Then feedback, take your feedback right away. Uh, if the status is good, start building it, but in this one point, take feedback again. You want to take a few feedback rounds before you release the final outcome, and this final outcome with constant feedback rounds is up with less defects rather than an average outcome. Finally, a prudent and worthy product can be released. And after the grand release, updates can be added with constant feedback at par with customer needs. Apple, Uber, Instagram, SiteGround are a few of the famous companies that treat feedback as an important part in their business. So there is another side of this section, create the need of the product. Well, actually, this is for bigger companies, but still startups can practice to do it by small steps. For an example, Apple created the wireless charging feature for the latest iPhones, but they did not send any on their default pack. So iPhone users need to buy this wireless charger separately, which costs nearly $50, and this is one of the best examples for creating the need for the product. So all these points we were talking about are for the products or ideas that you already have. But say you do not have any specific idea. That doesn't matter. Start for free. Check the use of your social media. Create a personal blog or a YouTube channel. The main, uh, target the main niche you thought your business would be. Then share your contents and valuable posts through those. This will definitely give you the idea of the user's preferences. You can get a broad idea of what they like and dislike, and this is gaining feedback. You have now collected your first round of feedback, and you can build a strong list of followers through this process, which will help you to market your product. So as you see, this is a hassle-free and risk-free method for a startup. A growth hacker should equip this tip in, the, in his toolbox with Mark Important. So now we have validated the product and have targeted the audience and what's next? Next, we can actually start to work. Before this, I want to bring in an acronym, a double H, triple R, and these funnel stages can be drawn as acquisition, activation, retention, revenue, and referral. And this uh, acronym is also known as pilot metrics. Uh, let's dictate. So the third, uh, the first one, uh, the first A of this acronym is acquisition, and that will be the rule number three in our speech. That is how you get people to know you by your name. As I mentioned earlier, after you have an idea and target your crowd, now it's time for you to act. Take your validated idea into the market. This is where SEO, paid advertising, word of mouth, public relations all come up. Uh, just a small tip, keep in mind to keep a simple budget. Spending thousand US dollars on paid advertising and receiving a lower traffic or getting a higher bounce rate means either the target audience was the wrong one or the expectation is somewhat different. So this acquisition can be done in three different ways, in referral traffic, in sticky traffic, and in paid traffic. So uh, referral traffic in the sense of going viral. You can either provide a free value added service or something that your product goes viral. People tend to share these types of products with promotions. Take advantage of social media at this point and also take advantage of quality backlinks. I repeat, quality backlinks. But if something goes wrong and the expected outcome couldn't be met, make sure to change the strategy quickly and do not stay on the same strategy too long. So the next day is to get traffic and it gives the best use experience ever as possible. Facebook, as an example, uses this strategy very powerfully. Facebook users use it as they have glued into it and all the strategic ways have become so successful in Facebook. You can always come up with a simple, nice idea to keep your customers in yours as long as you can. These increased session durations and number of sessions will definitely be an advantage. So the other thing is paid traffic. Paid traffic can be used for products such as hardware or other services and also in software products also. That is not much recommended. But what to keep in mind is to decrease cost while increasing profit. So spending unnecessary amount of money is something to avoid in startups. So the next A is activation, and that would be the rule number four in our speech, how to give users a happy first experience. Giving happy first ex user experience is the key to activation. This can be easily measured in Google Analytics by looking at the session duration. 
When a person spends a longer period than a minute navigating through site pages or an app, we can say that there is something for him to stay longer. This time impacts SEO. Since we don't know why the user made his choice to stay longer, make everything for him to stay longer. Make the processes clear and simple. Your strategies as easy signups, logins, as users do not want to stay too long on these processes. If you can avoid taking very personal information like credit card details, that is an advantage as many users do not want to reveal that private information. Then only the happy experience will be made out from the first visit. So don't forget, as long as you make them happy and satisfied, a successful sale is around the corner. Just remember to get natural traffic, giving the best experience. So the next R, the first R in our speech is retention, and that would be the rule number five. So now we have gained some users and give them happy first experience. Not what's next? You have to persuade them to come back again or try again, as returning customers tend to spend more money than a first-time user. These repeating customers or loyal customers tend to buy more compared to others. Even though this fact remains unharmed over years, most companies do not follow this. They spend the majority of their budgets to gain new customers, but not to retain customers. As a growth hacker, you should definitely make a set of loyal or retaining customer base and also do not forget to focus on them and focus on their demands as they are more likely in the buying behavior than this is a worth shot. Trust me. To reduce customers roaming around and zero moment of truth, you can always use your own strategies. And this zero moment of truth is a concept by Google. You can uh, search if you're interested in. And uh, these old strategies I've said is, uh, I take email as an example. So how do they use emails to use retention and to attract users at once? Facebook, AliExpress, LinkedIn, and many other reputed companies use this tactic. When you can't log in this account for some time, they send you this attractive email of what you have missed with a loving message that they missed you and come back soon. And isn't this clever? And again, live chat with the online customers is also another engaging campaign for the users to stay and to come back. Use tactics like bots if you cannot actually attend to live chats, as users trust these live chats. Do not break, into, break the trust by not responding to them if you have already established a live chat on your website. Uh, these are many more strategies like this and you may create your own ones when you go ahead with the business. So the most important are our uh, speech is revenue. This is the main point in startups and every business. For startups, the revenue generating model is really important. You may want to have a good team with a good front office in future, but at first you may get stuck with negative cash flow and be frustrated and that is natural for a startup. Use the mission strategies and anything good you can think of to overcome the situation like special campaigns, giveaways, email campaigns, reducing shipping charges. These will change your days. Every big company was once a startup and most of them have faced the same situation less or more. They have used these marketing strategies to its finest to overcome these issues and their frustration has switched to revenue. And hanging on for a while with the difficulties will reward you lightly then, I promise you. I know you can have, a, you can see a simple email or a simple nice text message will change the fate of your business. This is what growth hackers actually should do in a startup. Set the idea, validate it, test it, measure it, and rip it until you reach your target. Growth hackers should know the way of doing this. So now, the last R, referrals. Many companies hire the best marketers and best analyzers to create complex strategies, processes, and many other plans for attracting customers. They spend millions of dollars just to advertise their products. But startups cannot do this, or even if they can, they shouldn't do this, as Paul discussed earlier. So what startups can do to have college referrals or backlinks? Well, just a simple question would do the trick. Would you recommend this company to a friend? And this simple question has done a lot, trust me. This can be presented in many ways when the sale is on board and maybe uh, as a question with yes, no answers, or maybe as a skill, or maybe a star rating. So this net promoter score is a layout that many companies use these days to make their referrals go up plus. So you can get a clear idea of the types of customers you have and can act accordingly. If the customers belong to the middle type here, you can need to pay extra attention to them so that you can save them before going to some other product. When it comes to net promoter analysis, you have to take the calculation as per the image and see which way you're heading and then act accordingly. 
other than the extra loyal customers are the customers will leave the product as soon as a cheaper or easier alternative shows up. So you, can, so you have to pay good attention to your product's quality as well as your customer's behavior. So uh, the conclusion and the most important part is continuous improvement. This is very critical stage. Most startups omit this step once they have met their target. But this would be the starting point of their destruction. People will find better alternatives if you do not improve from time to time. Now we have good referrals also and you have good revenue and you're doing really great. So continue with these good guidelines or steps you just follow with some experiments to improve. Otherwise, if the product remains the same for some time, users would find more advanced ones from outside par with their daily changing needs. Say so you have marketed the product and sent emails and did many other strategies to attract users, but you forget to add this step guide anywhere or couldn't email the guidelines. User, find, uh, user would feel that he's abandoned and might leave the product because of this. But if you took care of it continuously, even after the sale, you could have saved the customer by either sending him the guidelines or updating the product with a step guide. And this is why it, feedback is important. So almost all the companies in the world practice these improvements, iterations, and this is a must for a startup. As you can see, this is the growth we are talking about. This is the target. Do you practice these improvement steps and I guarantee that you will get 100% success as customer satisfaction is the key to success. So I hope this would encourage you to learn and practice growth hacking or else this would give a tiny to the startup owners out there. Um, so that's it. Um, thank you for listening. Um, if you have any questions or any queries, contact me this, uh, via this uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook or email. I'm more than happy to help you. And if you have any questions, you can drop in this chat also and enjoy the conference. Any questions, guys? Thanks, Hanani. Thank you so much. Thanks, Samantika. Thank you, Mansanki. You're so welcome. Yes, of course, it does affect a lot because uh, at the end of the day, what we need is revenue and the traffic is the one who generates the re uh, revenue for us. So traffic is really, really important. Hey, Shani. Thank you for the question. Welcome. That's a lot, actually. You can, you can, you know, email campaigns like a talk. You can just send email to get, grab their feedback. We can uh, just ask their opinion about the product. There's so much. You can think of the good things with your business. Since I don't know about your business, but uh, it's different uh, from industry to industry. But there will be many things depending on the industry. But just email is a, one of the best traits, actually. So you can grab the returning customers, giving promotions, uh, some uh, promotions with email campaigns would do the trick neatly. And thank you, Pramodi. Great, thank you. Thank you, Heshani.
any questions? Or else you can connect me with LinkedIn. Uh, like it's in uh, Black My Hand Design. Uh, I can drop the LinkedIn profile. This is it. If any of you are interested, please uh, drop a message. I will help you as I can. Yes, of course, I would. I would definitely do that. Um, if the guys can reach to us, and we're trying to reach to tech ladies also. We have this uh, Facebook group also, a uh, public group for tech ladies in Sri Lanka. So we're trying, uh, trying so much to help everyone in any way we can uh we will definitely help and if they if they can reach us or if we can reach them we will definitely help thank you uh since you guys have no any other questions i guess uh, i would take my leave and if you guys have any question please feel free to ask i have dropped my linkedin here so you can drop me any message you want about the, this uh, entrepreneurship and startup or SEO because I'm, a, I'm doing SEO also and uh, I'm doing Krasima. Uh, I'm co-founded Krasima. Krasima is an online uh, CV gener generating tool. So if any of you need uh, to use uh, an online tool for generate your resume, generate your CV, uh, please feel free to check Krasima. I believe it's really good. So um, I am taking my leave here. Thank you so much uh, for joining with me today and enjoy the conference. Bye bye.